guys, welcome back. Yours truly making here. Would you guys like to hear which vintage sofas I believe are worth the money and the time it may take to save for them? Well, let's get started. Okay, let's just get it out of the way. And because of course I am sitting on a piece of this particular sofa, the sofa that is so oversaturated on social media and with interior design influencers. And I can understand why this is caused and I'm so over this sofa attitude. I get it, I get it. But this is a truly great design sofa and can be easily mixed in with all different interior design styles. Of course, I am talking about the Camaleon de Sofa designed by Mario Bellini in 1970 for CNB Italia, now BNB Italia since 1973. The sofa was produced by the company for only nine years until 1979, making it a rarity for vintage collectors. But because of the huge grown popularity, BNB Italia brought back the model in 2020. The sofa, which is a modular sofa, can be realized and arranged to whatever fits your needs and style. Actually, Bellini's goal when designing this now design icon. As you see, I only have one narrow piece here, but that is all I wanted for this small room. I actively sought it out because of its small compact size, a mini lounger to say for my very tiny office slash beauty room here. It was, and hard to believe, more difficult to find because most dealers want to sell all pieces together or, you know, a whole set. Now, there are companies who make replicas, but still a very well-made replica is going to still cost a couple of thousands of dollars. A vintage, depending on the condition and how many pieces, 10,000 and upwards. Personally, I would never consider buying a brand new one from B&B Italia. A true vintage one is more valuable to me. I would like to note that Mario Bellini is still alive and actively designing to this day at 89 years old. Now let's talk about a sofa that many may not have heard of, but is one of my personal favorites and which I have owned four in my life and you can have for less than any West Elm, CB2 or even most IKEA sofas. I am talking about the Cork and Seta Modular Sofa, first designed in the 1960s from the company Core. The name Concetta is derived from Latin meaning sit together and offers truly an optimal modular flexibility. From a single seater to as many joined together as you have room for. There's also a corner piece, maybe an urban legend yet to be seen by me personally, only in a few photos. I am still on the hunt though. It is simple. All seating bodies are 60 centimeters wide, two different arms, low or tall, and different uh, footing choices. The rectangular sleigh-like base in black or silver, a straight bar with peg-like feet, and I even had a two-seater leather one with wheels on the bottom of the straight feet. I still to this day regret that I sold that sofa. I, I just don't know what I was thinking. Each piece has protruding connectors underneath that go into the foot part and then secured with this pin underneath through the openings of the connectors that are now lodged in the foot bar. The easiest sofa to quickly take apart and build back together. My very first one was a four seater that I paid barely a hundred euros for, but unfortunately was a less expensive version that had foam seating and due to the age, 
did produce crumbled foam dust constantly under the sofa. So of course I got rid of that one. My next ones were all downfield. Still as my main sofa today is this green gray four seater from 1968. All original fabric, all original parts on the silver slave feet. I paid around 600 euros for this one. I also have a three seater from 1970, cost me around 300 euros. It was originally cream colored and I had recovered in a beautiful black wool mix. Even though Core offers the taller arms, we made these ourselves. One at one's a little bit even taller and I had the poster pillows made just to give a different look from the other sofa. This sofa, this black one has been replaced with another sofa that's coming up later on the list, but it is very protectively packed in my cellar space. I learned my lesson, never selling that sofa ever. But stay tuned for future videos because I believe the sofa or at least parts of it will make a resurgence in my apartment. Turn that notification bell on. The most expensive was the leather sofa I had paid about 800 euros for that, but I sold it for over a thousand. A note about the company Core, no matter how old a model is and no longer produced, you can still get parts for any of their sofas. I needed some more connection pens on, voila! A modern version of the Concetta is still produced, but not with the singular individual modules. So again, I prefer the vintage one, totally worth it. Let's move on to another not so popular modular sofa, but worth it to me. Are you guys recognizing a pattern here? <laughs> I'm working on a video of things I always have in my decor and one is a modular sofa. My adult life has been spent in apartments and I have never lived in an apartment building in Europe with an elevator. It is a huge help when you are schlepping a sofa up and down the narrow stairwell of a 120 year old building. Okay, the modular sofa by Roberto Iera for Felici Rossi from 1970 is the sofa for you if you want the same great design along the lines of the Camaleonda, but one that not everyone has. One cool thing about this sofa is the versatility of the arm rest placement. They don't have to be just placed at the end, but can also be placed between each piece. There is also a corner piece to help form the perfect L-shaped sofa. The last sofa I saw consisting of five pieces and three armrests, I saw sell on first dibs for around 13,000. Guys, one more sofa. I don't want to make this video too long, so I will make a part two, but make sure you come back to see the third sofa on this list that I personally own. For the last sofa, let's revisit the ingenious Mr. Bellini, who in 1972 created the Le Bambola sofa, again for B&B Italia. A two or three seater compact sofa, ideal for small spaces. Now you're probably thinking, oh, making the first non-modular sofa. Well, not really. <laughs> the Le Bambola was also realized in a modular version, but there is no way to connect them. I can imagine me plopping down the sofa, it moves and I end up falling between the pieces. <laughs> but I could imagine a two seater paired with the center modular piece due to it not having any armrest, that will help you know, open up your space, reducing the boxiness. If you have two pieces with the arms, it's a little bit too boxy. The original Bambola sofa was made in a red textile, but I recommend if you are going to purchase one or more, invest in the leather versions. Simply a classic leather sofa ages well and blends in with every design style. A Bambola collection was developed due to the immense popularity. Skip the Bambola, skip. Listen to me speaking German. <laughs> There's a Bambola bed, day bed, chaise lounge. Again, I would stick with just the leather pieces for these also. For the sofa's 50th anniversary, B&B Italia gave the Limbola a little facelift and introduced the armchair. 
Unfortunately, all textile versions, but you know my opinion on new versus vintage. Depending on the piece, old or new, your cost will be from around 5,000 and upwards. Well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and please return for the rest of my list. Loved having you here. And as always, yours truly, Art Makin. Bye. Make sure my boobies aren't falling out. Am I saying that word right? Ingenious. Ingenious. Ingenious or ingenuous? Ingenious. Ingenious. <clears throat>